I remember when I met you, I knew that it was love. The second that you caught my eye, we got together and things were fine for a while till you slept with some other guy. I will admit I was a little bit peeved, everything you told me was nice. But I'm over it now, so there's really no need for you to apologise. And I won't get upset, I won't feel sad or cry about all of the nice times we had. I won't miss the ways that you've done me wrong and I won't slag you off in my next song. I won't even try to convince you to stay or moan about all the trouble that you've made. Why would I do any of that when I've got naked pictures of you I can post on your Facebook page? Yay! Now you might be regretting not changing your privacy settings. I guess that when you decided to cheat, you must have failed to recall about the pictures that you sent me that time you were feeling kinky and now I'm glad that I kept them all. I'll notify all of your friends in just a few clicks and they're guaranteed to get a few likes. And even if they don't all want to comment on your new pics, I am guessing that your grandparents might. So I won't get upset, I won't feel sad or cry about all of the nice times we had. I won't list the ways that you broke my heart or key the word slut down the side of your car. I won't take the blame for none of your mistakes or have revenge sex with your mates. Why would I do any of that when I've got naked pictures of you I can post on your Facebook page? You say, I hope that we can still be friends. And I say, yeah, that would be really nice. But I think instead, <laughs> I'll apply an Instagram filter to them all. And I'll share them with the world on your Facebook wall. There's the ones with the ball gags and the whips and the chains. I doubt when your boss sees this, he'll see you quite the same. Some you're wearing PVC and some you're in the nude. Some you're doing inappropriate things with food. I am over you now. No, I'm really not bitter, by the way. You might want to change the password on your Twitter. But I won't get upset, I won't feel sad, or cry about all of the nice times we had. I won't list the ways that you've done me wrong, and I won't slag you off in my next song. I won't take the blame for none of your mistakes, or have bad revenge sex with your mates. Except maybe that blonde girl you work with But why would I do any of that? When I've got naked pictures of you I can post on your Facebook page And you might not think it's that bad Until you notice that in all of them I've tagged your dad <laughs> Cheers. Oh, you guys are great. This is going to be fun, I can tell. So uh, my name is Steve. I go by the name of Bad Motherfucker. And uh, I play funny, happy songs. This next one is a funny, happy song about suicide and death and depression and arson and overdosing. <laughs> this is called Suicide is for Pussies. Vet, I fear and I need one quick It's become quite clear that my cat is sick He's feeling blue, though I've tried and tried He never plays, he never eats In bed he stays, but never sleeps All he wants to do is commit cat suicide It breaks my heart, it's such a pity Please help my suicidal kitty His mental health is not intact and I don't know how much longer he can live like that but I'm scared unless something is done all nine of his lives will be gone it really sucks to have a suicidal cat He 
took a spin inside the washing machine I came out alive but smelling cleaner and tries to and tries to overdose on his catnip treats Last month when he was feeling low He jumped out of a third floor window He might have come close but they always land on their feet So is this my fault? I fear it must be Please help my suicidal pussy Cause every time I turn my back He'll be trying to kill himself by burning down our flat And by now he probably would have done But he can't light a match because he don't have thumbs It really sucks to have a suicidal cat Help me sing please ba ba da ba ba da ba ba da ba da ba 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 da da ba ba da ba da ba ba da and when I feed him breakfast he thinks he ought to try and drown himself in his milk saucer Please do your best, we're running out of time He's made the decision to stay in bed Listening to Joy Division and Radiohead He's a manic depressive bipolar feline now his cat tail is ending sadly Please help my suicidal tabby I don't want to overreact But I need to find a place that sells kitty Prozac Because now it's just a matter of time Before he goes to the cat house in the sky It really sucks to have a suicidal cat I'm starting to wish I got a hamster or a rat do you think the pet shop would give me my money back? <laughs> this is a new song. I'm going to mess it up. It's called Hipster Girl. It's for all you hipster girls. Goes like this. I was in Starbucks waiting in line When I saw this girl for the very first time Her hair was blue to match her shoes She took my breath away When I said hello she smiled softly I asked if I could get her a coffee And she said yes please, you can indeed I'm quite partial to a pumpkin spice latte Oh hipster girl with holes in her ears And a piercing in her nose Oh hipster girl goes to vintage second hand shop Stops for all her clothes Oh, hipster girl I hope that you won't figure it out too soon You're a hipster girl And I'm not cool enough for you ba ba da ba ba da ba she wears skinny fit jeans and flannel shirts And listens to bands that I've never heard of She roller skates and knits and bakes But not simultaneously <laughs> She shared her collection of herbal tea And I made her a mix CD or three And then she took me back to her one bed flat That she shares with a black and white cat called Morrissey Oh, hipster girl, I wanted to meet someone like you for years Oh, hipster girl Maybe I could take you to see the Lumineers Oh, hipster girl I hope that you won't figure out it's true You're a hipster girl And I'm not cool enough for nothing lasts forever We were from two different worlds And there came a day when I had to say goodbye to my hipster girl She said comedy folk is out this year And then she had to run She was going out to dinner on on a date with the bass player from Mumford and Sons Oh, hipster girl, I should have known you'd do this from the start Oh, hipster girl, you stole my mix CDs and broke my heart Oh, hipster girl, but one day you will see you've been a fool Cos I was liking you before liking you was cool ba ba da ba ba da ba So, I've always loved B 
big political protest, Power to the People songs, I was going to write a, uh, a charity single to raise awareness of the plight of starving people in Africa. But this Bob Geldof guy has that covered, apparently. So instead, I wrote a song about another group of starving people, which is uh, vegetarian zombies. Because uh, any zombie fans here? Anyone watch Walking Dead? Wow, this is going to go down super well. <laughs> Yeah, fair play, yeah. Uh, it was definitely better at the start. But the thing is, Walking Dead makes a zombie apocalypse look like a lot of fun. But if you're a vegetarian like me, there are certain issues that need to be considered when becoming a zombie. And I wrote a song to explain those issues. And it goes like this. It's called Corn of the Dead. <laughs> it's not meant to be funny. This is serious issues now, guys. It goes like this. People think that a zombie invasion would be the source of fun and games and the most awesome of all occasions, and that's all mostly true. But there are zombies who can't enjoy eating the flesh of girls and boys. Due to their dietary choice, they prefer to eat tofu. You can't enjoy a rampage like you should when you don't find the taste of flesh that good. There's nothing much at all to eat for those adverse to human meat If only walking dead fans understood Zombies should enjoy hunting season But for vegetarian zombies there's no reason It's even worse for zombie vegans They can't eat cheese or eggs they hate the zombie holocaust Cause everything comes with blood sauce The only option for a main course Is heads and arms and legs Every meal starts to taste the same Cause there's no corn alternative to brains if only Linda McCartney knew that vegetarians would be zombies too If only Walking Dead fans felt their pain This is where the sad, like all the celebrities singing would come in Vegetarian food often tends, yes, to put zombie dinner parties at dead ends You can serve lentil curry to your zombie friends They'd rather eat each other instead It's not a good environment If you have special dietary requirements It's all quite inconvenient It takes the fun out of being dead Cos you can't enjoy a rampage like you should When you don't find the taste of flesh that good there's nothing much at all to eat for those adverse to human meat If only Walking Dead fans understood that every meal tastes the same Cos there's no veggie alternative to brains And that's the reason you'll soon get bored if you're in a vegetarian zombie horde If only Walking Dead fans If only Walking Dead fans felt their pain Okay, we all like to have a laugh. We all enjoy a good laugh. Now it's time to get serious. Just for three minutes or so. This is called Stuff You Wouldn't Do. It's about stuff that you wouldn't do. And it goes like this. I need to work on this between song banter, don't I? <laughs> anyway, play the song, okay. You wouldn't steal a handbag. You wouldn't steal a car. You wouldn't steal a TV, unless that's the kind of person you are. But you wouldn't steal a banjo, you wouldn't steal a shoe. So you shouldn't download movies, cause that counts as stealing too. You wouldn't rob a sweet shop, you wouldn't rob a bank. You wouldn't hijack a cruise ship and make the passengers walk the plank. And you wouldn't steal an escalator. You wouldn't steal a plane So you shouldn't download movies Cause it's basically the same Somewhere in a mansion Over in LA 
Johnny Depp is starving and you're partially to blame. I love the fact that you guys find Johnny Depp's death so amusing. And how will Peter Jackson ever pay off all his debt if you don't buy the Lord of the Rings 21 disc box set? You wouldn't shave a poodle, you wouldn't grope a nun, you wouldn't streak at a cricket match even if it looks like fun, and you wouldn't steal a pick and mix even if you were hungry at the time. So you shouldn't download movies cause it's just as much a crime. You wouldn't steal a penguin, you wouldn't steal a bear. If you saw your nan was about to sit down, you wouldn't steal her chair. And you wouldn't burn a hospital, you wouldn't burn a church. So you shouldn't download movies because that's several times worse. Don't say I never warned you, don't say you weren't told before. When you were awake to find the FBI smashing down your door. There's no movies where you're heading. You'll find to your dismay, cause you don't get no free Wi-Fi in Guantanamo Bay. You wouldn't punch an old lady, then laugh and run away. You wouldn't steal a baby, then sell him on eBay. And you wouldn't dig up a family's dead dog and post it to them in the mail. So you shouldn't download movies or you might end up in jail. If you still decide to download films, it's your loss in the end. Cause you won't get any special features and you won't have any friends. And it's not just the law that judges you, God sees it as well. So you shouldn't download movies, or you might end up in hell. And you don't want to go to hell. Yes. <laughs> Folk music is generally a very depressing genre of music. People ask me how I stay so happy playing folk music. And I say, well, I've written a song to explain that. It's called High on Life, and it goes like this. I feel good today. I've got a feeling that everything is going to go my way. And I know the reason why, as I sit here in this nice green light, it's because I'm just high on life. My face is a permanent grin. I've got a feeling that I can achieve anything. And I know the reason why the whole world today seems so bright, it's because I'm just high on life. And marijuana. Outside the flowers are in bloom But I've got a feeling there's no reason to move from my bedroom It's true I could go anywhere but instead I'll just watch all three seasons of Walking Dead Cause I'm just high on life and marijuana There's so many things to do and see Like how that green light over there is trying to dance with me And it feels good to be alive Watching Breaking Bad seasons one to five Cos I'm just high on life and marijuana I've often tried to explain it to my friends How it feels to be high on life They just can't comprehend Maybe it's because they're pessimists That they cannot see it's more likely just cause they're not smoking as much weed as me. I stare for half an hour at my socks while I eat a pack of cornflakes straight from the box. I have got no need for milk or a spoon as I watch every episode of Button Moon cause I'm just high on life and marijuana. Button Moon, yeah! My friends call on my phone 
they've got a feeling I should come outside and spending too much time alone. But then I say I've got a better idea, why don't all of you come over here? And we can watch Lord of the Rings whilst listening to Pink Floyd CDs. We can look for the bits where the music fits with the movies perfectly. And then we can have a conversation about the possible implications. What the hidden meaning could be that we never noticed before. Like is it a social commentary or a subtle metaphor? About gods or guns or life or death or dated politics or votes or boats or goats. By the way, on an unrelated topic, I have never actually been shown proof that we can't breathe in space. I bet that's just a tale that the government tells, so we don't try to escape. And they cancel the sci-fi TV shows that could unravel the lie. So let's stay in tonight and look for clues in Futurama and Firefly. <laughs> and then my friends say... No, mate, we'll probably just go down the pub. Maybe some other night. That's okay, cause I'm still high on life and marijuana. I feel kind of paranoid suddenly. Why is everybody looking this way except me? A solution must be found. Maybe a few of you could turn around. Just while I'm still by love. Something doesn't feel right. I've got a feeling I've forgotten something important tonight. Oh, wait, I know what I've done wrong. I got so high I forgot to write the end of this song. <laughs> Cheers, thanks. <laughs> It's just a joke, I'm not really high. Um, I played this song um, at a place called the Marlborough. It's over there somewhere. And after I played it, a guy sent me a tweet. At Bad Mother Foca, if you want to follow me on the Twitter thing. A guy sent me a tweet saying, um, pointing out the scientific inaccuracies in this song. <laughs> so have a listen, and in your little heads... See if you can figure out where the scientific inaccuracies in this song about polar bears are. <laughs> this is called uh, Polar Bears. And it goes like this. I once bumped into a polar bear at the North Pole on holiday. He had big teeth, but I was too scared to turn and run away. I thought that this might be the end. Then he began to speak. He said, I don't want to eat you, I just want a friend, so I can play hide and seek. So he hid first, and I closed my eyes, and I counted to thirty, but I didn't stand a chance, cause I didn't realise that polar bears can play dirty. Polar bears are awesome at hide and seek, and the reason I suppose is they can just lie down wherever there's snow and put their paws over their noses. They've never actually been observed to do that, you know. It's a song about a talking polar bear. <laughs> I asked the penguins if they observed where that polar bear did go. They said they didn't, they were more concerned trying on their tuxedos. Then there was an Eskimo that I met, he was fishing on the ice. He could see that I was quite perplexed, so he gave me this advice. He said, the game that you're playing is hardly fair And there's not a lot I can do, sir If you play hide and seek with a polar bear You'll always be the egg loser <laughs> Can't please some people Cos polar bears are awesome at hide and seek The reason I suppose is They can just lie down wherever there's snow And put their paws over their noses Polar bears are awesome at hide and seek And the reason I suppose is They can just lie down wherever there's snow And put their paws over their noses 
And so if you ever go to the North Pole, you can try to find him there. But you might as well give in, cause you're never going to win playing hide and seek with polar bears. So, hi. Oh, okay, let's, let's be quick. I moved down here um, a couple of months ago and I live in Hove, and generally Hove is a very nice place to live, except there's one small problem with me living in Hove, is because I'm a werewolf and all of my neighbours are very anti-werewolves. They don't like me being a werewolf. Um, <laughs> I'm impressed by how well you guys took this revelation that I'm a werewolf. It's like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's a liberal town. They're cool. Um, so this is a song. Yes. This is a song about werewolves and being a werewolf and the issues that come with being a werewolf. And what I need from all of you, if you'd be so kind, I know these guys here are going to help me out. Is a, and in the course of this song, every time you hear me say, beware, beware of the werewolf, I need all of you guys to give me your best devilish, ghoulish werewolf howl, just like these guys are going to be doing over here. And if you don't do it, you'll be like the only person in the room not doing it, and you'll feel left out and silly. This is called The Wolf Man of Hove. I suffer from an evil curse when the moon shines full on the land. I grow big fangs and a coat of fur, I turn into a wolf man. I crave the taste of human flesh, so a hunting I will go to pick off all the lost tourists along the seafront of Hove. I spend my nights in the moonlight, causing panic and fear. Then wake up nude the next afternoon underneath Brighton Pier. On my way home, people stare and moan. I didn't mean to cause a fuss. How was I to know you're supposed to wear clothes to ride the 700 bus? So beware, beware of the werewolf. Beware, beware of the werewolf. Beware, beware of the werewolf. You don't know where the wolf might be. So beware, beware of the werewolf. Beware, beware of the werewolf. Beware, beware of the werewolf. I'm the wolf man of BM3. Last month I went out on a date. We ended up in her room. I fell asleep and stayed a bit too late. I forgot that it was a full moon. She woke me up and asked me, did I fancy a midnight snack? And then I jumped out of her bed looking like a wolf and ate her startled cat. She was not impressed, she got quite upset, it was not a good first impression. It was our first date and it didn't end great, I'm not sure if we'll have a second. But this is the trade that I happily made to get my werewolfy powers. Still it doesn't seem fair the amount of hair that I have to clean out of my shower. So beware the hair of the werewolf. Beware the hair of the werewolf. Beware the hair of the werewolf. You don't know where the hair might be. So beware the hair of the werewolf. Beware the hair of the werewolf. Beware the hair of the werewolf I'm the wolfman of the M3 I really am keen on this town's cuisine There's so many of you to eat Even I wouldn't touch some of the stuff That you find out on West Street I tell you it's a lonely life But if it sounds fun to you Maybe you could come round for a bite to eat And become a werewolf too so beware, beware of the werewolf. Like, about 10% sadder for this bit. Beware, beware of the werewolf. Now do like a kind of inquisitive, like, huh, one? Kind of like you're confused, you're a little bit intrigued by something. Beware, beware of the werewolf. Huh? That's good. That's exactly what an inquisitive werewolf sounds like, in fact. And then we pulled it up on E. Then beware, beware of the werewolf. Beware, beware of the werewolf. Beware, beware.
beware of the werewolf Cause you don't know where the wolf might be So beware, beware of the werewolf Beware, beware of the werewolf Beware, beware of the werewolf I am the wolf man of the ends I'm the wolf man of the ends I'm the wolf man of the Cheers. Uh, okay, let's do a three-minute song. Um, this song's about is for those guys over there. The only people in the room who are going to get what on earth I'm talking about. This is a song about my love life, which uh, there's only one word to describe it, which is complicated. If you have any questions about this song, come and see me. You might be confused. I'll clear it up. This is called Love is Complicated. It goes like this. <gasps> My boyfriend's got a girlfriend. I think she's kind of cute. I just met her ex-boyfriend and I think I like him too. It's not that hard to follow. I'll spell it out for you. I date him, we both date her and I date the guy that she don't date anymore. L-O-V-E, love is complicated. R-E-M-E-M-B-E-R, when we both just dated. S-E-X, you and I used to be so damn protective. Now we're C-O-L-L-E-C-T-I-V-E, love collective. She wears a diamond ring and says she's married. I asked her, how married are you? She said, not very. I hope it won't be awkward when I see her after the show. Cause I dated her when she was married to him. Then he got divorced, so I dated them both. O L O V E, love is complicated. R E M E M B E R, when we both just dated. S E X, you and I used to be so damn protective. Now we're C O L L E C T I V E, love collective. Small towns are great for meeting small town people. Tying them up to your small town bed I wash my laundry every small town weekend I've got the first two chapters of the ethical slut read The sex is great but now my jaw is aching From all of this forbidden fruit I'm tasting So before we kiss or remove our clothes There is a list I must disclose Of romantic entanglements, one night stands Girlfriends, friends with benefit plans L-O-V-E, love is complicated R-E-M-E-M-B-E-R, when we both just dated S-C-X, you and I used to be so damn protective Now we're C-O-L-L-E-C-T-I-V-E Motherfucking love collective L-O-V-E E, love is complicated R-E-M-E-M-B-E-R When we both just dated S-E-X You and I used to be so damn protected Now we're C-O-L-L-E-C-T-I-V-E Love Collective Cheers, thanks <laughs>